All right, let's go ahead and work our next inverse Z transform problem. This is another long division example. In the previous video, we worked almost the same problem, but we assumed a right-sided signal. So this is a signal that started at time zero and went towards positive time. In this example, in the second example here, we're going to work with the same ratio in terms of X of Z, but a different region of convergence corresponding to a left-sided signal which means when we do our long division, we need to get out z to positive powers since those correspond to um, negative time. So the x of z that we're going to be working with is exactly the same. 2 plus z to the negative 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half z to the minus 1. However, I have flipped the region of convergence. Previously, our region of convergence was magnitude z bigger than a half. Now it's magnitude of z less than a half, which tells me this has to be a left-sided signal. So when I do my expansion here using long division, I need to write x of z in terms of po positive powers of z. z to the 0, z to the 1, z to the 2, z to the 3, etc. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We are actually going to perform long division. I'm going to put 1 minus 1 half z to the negative 1 into 2 plus z to the negative 1. However, when I do that long division up here now, I need to get z to positive powers instead of z to negative powers. Because of that, I actually think it helps to flip this around just a little bit. Instead of writing 1 minus 1 half z to the negative 1, I wrote it as a negative 1 half z to the negative 1 plus 1. So I haven't changed anything there. Similarly, on the numerator, 2 plus z to the negative 1, I've written as z to the negative 1 plus 2. Same quantity. It's just going to help me get out those positive powers easier because now I can ask myself, what do I multiply this by and put here to give me z to the negative 1? So I can still kind of match up this first entry just like I did before. So let's go ahead and give that a try. What do I need to put up there? If I put a negative 2, then a negative 2 times this, I get positive 1z inverse, and that's exactly what I end up with there to get rid of the z to the negative 1. But I still have to multiply by that and put that there, so that's negative 2. And then I subtract this, the z to the negative 1s go away. 2 minus a negative 2 is 4, and I end up with a 4 there. And now I ask myself, what do I put right here such that when I multiply by negative 1 half z to the minus 1, I get 4? Well, I have to put a negative 8z there. So a negative 8 times a negative 1 half does give me 4. And then z times z to the negative 1 gives me z to the 0, which is 1. And I do indeed end up with 4. But then I have to multiply this times this still, which gives me negative 8z. And then when I subtract, the 4s go away, and I end up with 8z. And then the same thing, what do I put up top? It has to be a negative 16z squared. I multiply that times this. I end up with 8z minus 16z squared. Subtract, these cancel. A negative, negative 16z squared gives me positive. Put a minus 32 up there, multiply it out, right? We can just keep going for forever at this point, just like in the previous example. So just like in the previous example, you can tell we're never going to get to a remainder of zero. For other problems, that might exactly happen, but it does not happen here. But you can see the pattern now, right? It's always going up by a factor of 2 from minus 8 to minus 16 to minus 32 as the powers of z go up by a power of 1. So we could just keep writing down the pattern now. The next one's going to be minus 64z to the 4, then minus 128z to the 5, etc. The important part, though, is we can now write our x of z as this sequence. It's minus 2, minus 8z, etc. And we can go back to the time domain very easily. I can just go term by term, transforming each one of these pieces back into the time domain. For instance, x of k at time 0 is a negative 2, because a constant in time is delta of k in z. And then minus 8z, that is minus 8 delta of k plus 1, because z to the 1 corresponds to time k equals negative 1, so delta of k plus 1. And I can just keep going. Minus 16, z squared is z squared in z is a delta of k plus 2. And constants just come through the transform, right? Just like all linear transforms do. So that is the answer that we get for 
x of k. And obviously it keeps going, but we've been able to compute the first one, two, three, four time domain values of x of k in the time domain using long division. All right, so that is it for this example. We've worked two different examples of using long division to compute some terms in the time domain for x of k. So it's still inversion of a z-transform. It's just not the partial fraction expansion approach, which gives you an equation for all time. This lets us compute as many terms as we'd like, term by term, using long division. Thanks for watching.